Hello. Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing really well. Uh, welcome, welcome to the RU204 live stream. Uh, we're going to be going over our uh, newest course, RU204, Storing, Querying, and Indexing JSON at Speed. And, uh, yeah. So, Exciting stuff. <laughs> If, uh, if you've never joined us before, basically we're going to be going over uh, the course and we're going to be talking about some of the topics. Um, I created this course along with Simon Prickett and so uh, we can give some sort of background and texture to some of the course material, things we cover. Um, and if you have any questions while you're taking this course along with us, please do not hesitate to ask. Uh, if you're watching this in YouTube or Twitch, just go ahead and ask. If you're watching this as a syndicated YouTube broadcast, again, just add a comment uh, to the YouTube channel, and I do check those, and I will be able to respond to you. Uh, or, well, or Justin, they could join us at discord.gg slash Redis. Absolutely, yeah. So you can join us on our Discord channel, and we have, um, we have channels for every topic. So every course, uh, every technology, every programming language, every client. Uh, has its own channel. So if you ever have yeah. a question, go ahead and go there. And then I guess, Justin, do you, do you want to tell us who you are? Why why we have the authority to talk about RU204? Sure, sure, yeah. So uh, uh, I am Justin. I'm a developer advocate at Redis. So I just talk about Redis. I spread joy at Redis. Uh, we're like we're Johnny and Jenny Redis seed uh, here. <laughs> just, uh, just throwing out knowledge. Um, yeah. I do a lot of the YouTube videos here, and I also have worked on a lot of uh, production for our courses, so running Redis at scale, Redis security, um, and RU204 and RU203. Um, and yeah, so I, I put together a lot of the coursework for RU204. So, uh, yeah, so that's why good. Justin has the authority to help me, Savannah. I am also a developer advocate. Uh, I did not make this course. I don't know what I'm getting into, so... Justin's here to help me out if I if I have questions and here to guide us on this journey. <laughs> it's easy stuff, easy stuff. Um, well, cool. So some uh, expectations before we start. Uh, we do expect that if you want to take this course, um, you would have uploaded or sorry, uh, started up all the sample data into your database. It's really quite simple. Uh, you just go to the repository. And... Hey guy, I have a I have an even more preliminary requirement. Mm -hmm. um, if you're gonna take RU two hundred four, you need to join Redis University. Very true. And we're expecting you to have taken what one hundred one and one hundred two probably. Yeah, RU one hundred one is an uh, intro to Redis data structures. So that's going to give you a good rundown of everything that the core Redis. Um, software has. So all the lists, strings, hashes, sorted sets, hyperlog, log, geospatial, all the good things. Yeah. And then um, RU203, uh, querying and indexing and searching with Redis Search. Uh, okay. Which will give you more fundamental um, uh, background on using the search capabilities. And then RU204 kind of builds on both of those and you really get to play with uh, searching with JSON, which yeah. is a capability of Redis Stack. And okay. Redis Stack, Redis Stack is basically the next evolution of Redis, where it has capabilities such as JSON creation, uh, searching, indexing, updating, deleting, um, and a lot of other goodies attached. So search, search and query through hashes and JSON, uh, probabilistic data structures, Ooh. graph database structure. Um, all sorts of really, really great stuff and time series. Um, yeah. And all, of, all of this is in YouTube too. So if you want to check our YouTube, uh, we all have videos and tutorials on all of these different capabilities of Redis stack. Awesome. Uh, okay. Redis. So I have taken RU101 and I have taken RU203. I haven't taken the exam because I'm scared of the exam, but I have <laughs> taken RU203. So RU204. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's go through uh, some basics here. Um, I'm going to bring up this slide. Okay. And so the concept of JSON with Redis isn't a new one. Uh, we've been able to store JSON with, without a problem. 
but we store it as a string. So you see here, I'm taking, um, this is an example that I had for kind of like a Craigslist. Uh, we have uh, a user with preferred regions of where they would wanna sell their goods. They have a rating as a seller. And here's a list of the things they're selling. They're, it looks like they're selling a bass guitar and a bass amplifier. And this is a perfectly fine JSON structure. It's, it has a, embed, a list of embedded objects and it has a list. So the list is Vancouver and Chehalis and the list of embedded objects uh, is labeled under collections. So we can serialize this and make it into be one gigantic string as you see here. And that's totally fine. And a lot of people have been using Redis to do that. Um, there's just some things. There's some, some slight problems and challenges. If you're going to be serializing it, that costs compute power and that costs time. And to take out that string, that's not too much of a problem. Um, but then you're going to have to deserialize it and convert it from a string to a JSON object. Now, those are two big, huge bottlenecks. Um, but then you also have the problem of what if you want to update a value or delete a value or add some property or field? You're going to have to deserialize it, change the JSON object, and then serialize it and then put it back in. So that's really kind of slow. And Redis hates being slow. <laughs> Um, so we, we, we saw the need, uh, based off of the usage, uh, to actually have something better. Uh, so here we go with a hash. And uh, a hash is basically an object with uh, fields and values associated with them. So here we are. Um, you can see here I have the fields user, pref regions, rating, collections, and then the values are all serialized strings. So we're making it a little easier. Um, I could pull and update directly the rating so I can change that 97.95 to 96.95 by calling like h inker by or h decker by. Or if I want to say h inker by. H inker by. Well, I can do, yeah. What's that? I'm pretty sure. So I learned on stream the other day there is no decker by for sorted sets. You just inker by a negative number. Oh, well, there you go. Good to know. So um, there might there might be an H decker by, but I know at least <laughs> I know at least for sorter sets, you just got to add a negative. Right. Yeah. With, with Redis, there's more than one way to do a thing. <laughs> uh, so you'll notice with uh, pref regions and collections in the hash on the right, uh, those are actually uh, serialized values. So we have a serialized list and a serialized list of objects. And that's, again, not a problem. We can do that, but you still have to deserialize those and turn those into their native data types. So you would have to deserialize the pref regions into a, an array. Um, you'd have to deserialize collections into an array of objects, uh, which, again, isn't hard, but it's still not as fast as it can be when you're using it with Redis. Um, and again, we want to make uh, your experience pleasurable and fast. So now let's get really, uh, really technical and try to use as much as possible um, with, you know, all the data structures, the native data structures that Redis has. Uh, so all the way on the left, we have user colon feral 614. So that's uh, a hash. And you see pref regions, instead of actually having a serialized list, has um, the uh, key name, user colon feral 614 colon pref regions. And then that's it. So what we would do is we would grab that key name and then access it as a list. So it would be L range would be the command I would get if I wanted to get all the elements. I call L range and then user feral 614 colon pref regions and I would get that list. So, oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you can use lists uh, as references uh, within your hashes. And so this does allow you to um, manipulate every single element in your um, JSON object that you have stored in Redis 
but much easier. We're, get, we're getting easier. we're getting a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, do you see the the challenge or the problem that this now creates? Oh man, which one? <laughs> About which part? Well, just having everything like kind of parted out into its own individual data types. Yeah. Well, I mean, how do I get it all back into one thing? How do I tie my, you know, Vancouver back to the item that I have to know where I'm trying to sell these items? Right. So to retrieve all of this data, you'd have to have at least one call to first get the hash for the user and then another call for the user's pref regions. And then a third call to get the list of objects, objects. Okay. which are references. And then for every object in that list, uh, you would have to uh, retrieve all those hashes. So that's a pain. That's a pain. It is a pain. Everything's, uh, you know, everything's flattened by, we forced it to be flat, um, but it's just, it's still slow. It's still not as good as we'd like it. So, and um, that's actually all the, the slides I actually have. Okay. Um, so you're, you're leaving us with this. This is, this is the state of JSON. No, this is before JSON. <laughs> okay. So with JSON, uh, it's actually really, really nice. You can simply take a JSON blob um, with, you know, uh, wrap it around single quotes, and then you can actually send that into Redis as a JSON object. And then Redis will just automatically recognize it if you're using the correct command. And um, it will just know to store it as and it'll let you manipulate it as um, JSON. So, yeah, awesome. Make sure also, you use one of my favorite words, automatically. Automatic, yeah, you have to have automatic. <laughs> Another favorite is voluntold. Voluntold, yes. That is a common trope within uh, <laughs> tech. Um, so this is uh, the first section that um, for for our U two O four, and this kind of goes over like what we just you know kind of discovered and talked about. Um, so if you want to read it on your own, please feel free. But this basically shows you all the pain that you have to go through uh, storing native JSON into Redis before the JSON capabilities of Redis stack. So. That was section one already, section one, part one. There we go. <laughs> I've, there's, um, there's a cat. Yep, there's another cat. I and tried the cat... to remove her once. <laughs> this is Smokey. She's gray. Smokey. Smokey's very interested in storing JSON at speed. Oh, she's very interested in rubbing her face on my laptop and turning all of my screens the wrong directions. <laughs> um, so and with... yet. <laughs> With, uh, with JSON, uh, you have all the commands that you kind of know and love uh, with, you know, with Redis. So we have set and we have get. Um, and so um, if you've used Redis JSON before, when it was actually branded Redis JSON, you would probably have, have seen this before. But uh, we'll go, of course, through a, a, an example. Um, this is a standard uh, JSON example that we'll see throughout the course. Um, the course actually covers science fiction books, the top 10,000 best-selling science fiction books. Uh, With for... a caveat that I think we got rid of some of them that were... Yeah, some of them that just weren't good for an educational setting that might be a little uh, not safe for work. Um, we did get rid of those. And I think it's within the last... Wow. I think it might be of all time because we could actually search through books through, through year. So Yeah. Um, so here we have an example. Jennifer Armand Trout wrote the book Obsidian. It's 999 pages. Um, and then we have, uh, just, just to add some texture, uh, we have an inventory. So if we're like a, like a store or a, a library, a library. Yeah. yeah, we can see what we have. So we have stock number and then status for every object. Okay. And then we have a list of genres. So this one is young adult, fantasy, mm. science fiction, and science fiction with aliens. I like so, it. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a good example of kind of like everything that you would expect to see within um, JSON. Uh, we have embedded objects in a list. We have numbers. We have strings. And we have lists of strings. So all that good yeah. stuff. 
So um, to store a JSON object, uh, we call json.set, and then we give it a name or a key. Um, and this, in, for, for this course, we do ru204 colon book colon uh, 18161. And that's going to be uh, basically a direct copy of the base ID. So every okay. JSON object has its own base ID. Um, and this is kind of like a decision point for whenever you're actually creating uh, your whole JSON database within Redis. How do you want to name your keys? Um, you do need to have a consistent naming convention. That's very important. So right here, we're going to have all of our JSON book objects start with RU204 colon book colon and then some ID. Okay. So, so why do I need them all to be the same? What if I have a book, but what if I've got something else? Like, can I search for RU204 colon star? Like if I had books and then maybe I also have a cafe and I have like, I don't know, maybe I also have like a menu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to um, know what things in my cafe and my books both have aliens. Yes, you can definitely do that. Um, we we want to adhere to the naming structure because what we're going to do is when the search is actually up and running, it's going to look for all keys of a certain structure. Uh, yeah. So okay. we're going to have a, a prefix. So we can do RU204 colon as a prefix to search for or and to index over or RU204 colon book colon okay. to search through. And uh, we can also create indexes to search through multiple different key prefix types. So, okay. Yeah, you can do a bunch of different structures. Uh, we won't be covering that today. <laughs> that's fair. But yeah, that's a great question. Um, so we did set you up with some sample data that has consistent naming conventions, but by all means, yeah. you know, in the future, when you're creating indexes, um, you can use different different keys, but just know that it's going to be looking for certain key structure. Yeah. So JSON set uh, the key. And then we have this dollar sign. Now, uh, dollar sign is the introduction to JSON path syntax. Previous Redis JSON versions just used a dot. And that dot represented the root of the document, the beginning of the document. Um, we've updated it to have JSON path syntax, which actually has its own utilization of characters to allow you to access and kind of do some interesting scanning of your JSON object to pull out fields. Um, and we'll go over that in a little bit. Um, but basically, this is saying I want to store at the absolute root level of this JSON object the following. And this is the following. This is um, just the JSON object wrapped in single quotes. So you want to have your fields and your string values in double quotes, and then uh, encapsulating the entire JSON object, you want to put them in single quotes. Not too difficult. Not too difficult. No. It's very similar to storing a string, uh, where yeah. you would just do set <laughs> instead of JSON set. Um, and yeah, Redis will be like, OK, after you press Enter, that, that just means that everything was stored nicely. OK. Uh, I can actually switch over to my, let's see how we do this. Remove, make this one the big one. There we go. There we go. Oh, I don't know if that looks too good. Hold on, let me reshape this a little bit. <laughs> okay, let me clean it up. Justin, tell me what tool you're using right now. I'm sorry, what was that? What tool are you using right ah. now? What is this interface? <laughs> this is Redis Insight. So this is a graphical user interface for Redis database. Uh, you can connect to a cloud instance of Redis, or you can connect to your local instance or a Docker image. You just tell it where to go. Uh, here are my different um, Redis instances that I can connect to. This is Guy's for when he does his flight tracking stuff. This is my local instance. 
Um, and yeah, it's really cool. You get to look at stuff. Um, so let me first actually uh, demonstrate how to put in a, a JSON object, and then we can see it live on Redis Insight. So right. JSON.set, and then it's RU. Oh, no. Yeah, it's just book. OK. You froze for just a second. And I was uh -oh. like, oh, no. Uh, 18161. And then so I just said, hey, I want to oh, set. I want to create a new object. Um, and then this is going to be my key name. And then it's looking. You can see the hints right here. It says path. Um, so the path is going to be the dollar sign, which means the absolute root of the element. And then the value. So the value is going to be the entire object, JSON object, in single quotes. So I'm just going to paste it in here. And there we go. So that's going to be my entire command to create my first JSON object. Press Enter. <laughs> you have two single quotes. I have two single quotes. OK, that's fine. I can live with that. Let me go back up here. I think I pasted the double quote, the single quotes. OK, there we go. I also Yay. have to connect to my database. So now I actually have um, this object in my database. And I can look at it. You can see here um, all of the keys are organized. If you do it in a consistent fashion, you can see all of your keys organized like this. So we have. RU204, then within RU204, you have book. And then with book, you have all of these keys to look at. So let me just look up. I can do this within Redis Insight. RU204, book, colon, 18161. And there we go. So here's my key. I can see that it is 377 bytes. It is of type JSON. And I clicked on that. And now I can see my JSON object. Um, you can see all the data that I entered. You can see the inventory. Uh, you can just click it open. You can see these are objects. So that's really useful for just like, kind of like just quick checking your database to make sure everything is going in as you want. Yeah. Can I search for that 18161? Do I have to put that full RU204 colon books colon 18161 to get that result? I don't think so. Let's give it a try. Oh, what if yes, we put a do. what if we put a star in front of it? One eight one six one. There you go. So that star okay. is going to be a wild card. So we'll search for everything uh, before one eight one six one and just okay. Cool. So you could probably do that for partials too. Ooh. So this is <laughs> searching through a bunch of different. Um, yeah. Keys. I have a personal stream that I do today. It's for birds, so that's why it's also looking at bird tracker. Um, but it did find 12 keys that have a 1 and an 8 consecutively. Oh, and it's only at the end. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. But I could also do one. I bet if you star. Yeah. Yep, now we have 54. OK. Cool. And, um, Mephilic, our, our our viewer, our favorite viewer, not our favorite viewer, I can't say that, um, <laughs> our, our probably most frequent viewer. Uh, you can see the real command and monitor, which I didn't know. So I believe we could use, I don't know where to find it immediately. Um, there is. Oh, does Redis Insight have monitor? It has profiler. OK. I'm trying to find profiler. I do believe this will show. So let's try to look for um, 42. You'll see that it's constantly pinging info just because it's just making sure that Redis database is alive. So I'll do this. And there we go. So it's going info, oh. base, scan zero, match, star 42 star, count 10,000. OK. Yeah. So this is a really cool command. If you're playing up here and you want to see just how to like do that programmatically on your own, yeah. You profiler. Profiler is what they call it on Redis Insight. Uh, when you're running Redis from the CLI, 
uh, you'll want to run the command monitor. Okay. Or also with like a client. Yeah. Uh, the client is monitor. So, so that's actually setting up and creating um, a JSON object. All right. Yeah. So let's go back. Sorry, I have a bunch of screens going on here. Let's go back to this one, move this one. And yeah, so the uh, the actual section goes over what we just kind of looked at. Um, now, if you actually have an existing document that you want to update, uh, we still call the json.set command. Um, and it's very, very similar to setting a whole new object. But this time, we kind of do a drill down. We, we specify specifically what field we want to cover. So let me make this a little bit bigger. Um, so the main thing we are, are looking at here is json.set. Um, if we want to update the value of pages, let's say we have a different version that has larger print, therefore we have more pages. Um, we'll, we'll call upon that existing key and we're going to do dollar sign dot pages. So think of that as object notation. So yeah. object dot pages. And that's going to tell Redis to look for that field within the object and then change the value to 1,025. What happens so, if you do a dot set on a field that doesn't exist? Um, that will actually create it. So if okay. it doesn't, yeah, so it's kind of like one and the same thing. So it's, yeah. it's overwriting whatever is ex existing in pages. Uh, and if pages doesn't exist, then I'll overwrite it. Okay, so, so that, ooh, I could definitely get in trouble with that if I made a spelling mistake. Yeah. Yeah, it can get a little scary. Um, <laughs> so you just, uh, and you know, again, we're just like playing with the CLI. So that's why we're being so fast and loose with it. But um, yeah, it, you have to be very careful and very uh, mindful. So let me set here. So json.set my key name dollar sign dot pages. And then I'll set the value to 1025. And then I'll get OK. OK. And then let's look that up. Do 18161, just so I can verify that it works. Here we go. And there we go. We see the page count is 1,025. So Nicely done. Yeah, Redis Insight's great because you can just, again, verify that it, everything worked perfectly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's try that again. Uh, this one. In case you can't tell, Justin is playing with some new technology. Yeah, yeah. I'm using two uh, two different camera sources at the same time, so bear with me. Um, so along with set, you also get get. So most uh, Redis tools allows you to, allow you to call get or set. Um, and there's no point in setting JSON objects unless you can retrieve them. So just like set, the structures, you know, command, key name, and then what you want to pull out or what, what you're going to be dealing with. So we hear, we see here json.get, the key name, and then dollar sign. Dollar sign, again, is the uh, root document. So that means I'm going to get everything. So do it, do it. switch over to this. Need to figure out a good way to make that quicker. Um, and so I'll just call json.get. Are you 204 book 18161 dollar sign? And that will give me the entire object. Um, and you'll see here, now this is interesting, and this is by design. Uh, we're getting it as a list because there's always a possibility of retrieving more than one uh, with mm. M. Okay. Um, and to extend onto this, because we have this dollar sign, that's very, very important. That is telling it exactly what we want to get. If we want to get pages, that means object.pages, um, it will give us just the value of pages. So there we go, 1,025. If I want to get author, I'll just do dollar sign dot author. And there we go, Jennifer okay. Armantrop. And, so yeah. you mentioned that there's a possibility to get more than one with mget. 
So yep. does that mean, so what would happen if I did a JSON.get and there was more than one potential result? Would it give, does it just give me the first one? I don't know if it would give me, the, I mean, let's do this. Are you 204? Uh, let me look up. Let me just look up anything that has an 18 in it for fun. So 718 book 20. This will actually give it a, an error, I believe, because get is only for one. Yeah. Um, okay. Mget will give us multiples. And I think we need to give it that. There we go. So mget will give us multiple of the same of the objects. So the first one here, and then the second one is a little bit bigger because it also includes the description and some oh, other okay. data that we'll look at later on in the course. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. By design, you'll receive a uh, you'll receive an array back uh, just because okay. that's easy to iterate through and play with when you get yeah. back to the client. So yes, yeah, so, uh, JSON set is what you use. JSON get is also what you use. And then um, when you say, what were we doing here? Inventory. Let's look at inventory. So that's yeah. design dot inventory. And there you go. You have an array of an array of objects, which is fine. Again, you deal with that. Um, so yeah, that's Git. And it's very uh, fundamental to all of our everyday things. So definitely want to use that. Oh, wow. Let's just figure it out here, Justin. All right. <laughs> All right, so uh, we were able to set a document, and we were able to get a document. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, you know ask us live or go to Discord. Uh, there's also a video that I created that is a great pairing <clears throat> with this course, where I kind of go over like some of the biggest updates between um, Redis Stacks JSON capabilities and the traditional Redis JSON that we had before. Uh, so go ahead and check out that video. I don't like watching my own videos. I think I sound weird. So I'll just move on. So um, this is kind of like a hands-on uh, exercise section. So we're not going to be learning too much new here. Um, so we have JSON set E uh, dollar sign JSON string. That's pretty standard. Um, and so here's an example. If we want to have a JSON object course, RU204 exercise 1.2.1 status complete, this nice little object we just call json.set RU204. Uh, we're creating a key based off of just you know whatever we want, and we're setting it in. The main thing that you want to get from this hands-on exercise is that you want to have your raw JSON encapsulated in single quotes. And you want to have a key uh, naming convention that will be consistent with other like objects. All right. So what else do we have? To retrieve an existing JSON, instead of JSON.set, use JSON.get, and that will ret return uh, that JSON object that you did store. And so this is what we stored. We'll get that back. It's pretty simple. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this, you know, it might feel like I'm going over this quickly, but honestly, it's just, it's really, really like simple stuff to give you some, uh, just, you know, uh, muscle memory. Yeah. Now, this big one <clears throat> is going to be an actual live JSON object from your, um, let's add this, remove this, do this, and this. So this is actually retrieving a full one. Um, we're going to be retrieving the book object uh, ending in 687. And again, the dollar sign is going to give us everything. Everything, so, yeah. So that's why we have it in this huge, huge format. And it's not very easy to read um, unless you've been staring at a Redis CLI for three years. Um, oh, it's a space opera. Yeah. Oh, space operas are my favorite, actually. This is I, I've seen so many books I want to read, but I mean, but, <laughs> the design of when you have lists of books. Um, but this one actually has author ID and description 
and it has a genre, a list of genres within it, um, an extended um, inventory list, and it also has um, metrics, which will be a lot of fun. So we have uh, how many people voted on this book and what was the overall book score out of five. Five being really good, uh, zero being it stunk. So uh, stuff that we'll be able to Is look there a at. title on that one? Yes. Oh, it it's is. at the very end. Oh, interesting. Yeah. OK. So that's a really interesting point. You can't predict or depend on what uh, what like a sorting and organization of this uh, yeah. JSON object you're going to retrieve back because okay. Redis is interested in just doing it as fast as possible. Yeah. So, uh, but we can still do all the things that we learned about with our get command. So dot title, Sundiver. There we uh, go. Is this a big book? 710 pages. That's a good one. That's a, that's a good beach reader. Um, I can look up genres. And we have a list of all our genres. Ooh. So cool. Everything still works. So let me move that. Let's go back to here. Well, that was very easy. So yeah, that was a hands-on exercise. Um, and that's like par for the course for what the course actually has. There's no actual homework or quizzes because this is sort of something that is going over what you uh, probably already know with RU203. Um, so it's highly recommend that you check those out. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, so um, let's start with JSON path. This is where you start getting oh. really, oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, no, just oh. surprised by the cat tail. <laughs> Smokey has any questions, more than happy to answer. <laughs> So uh, retrieving data with Redis JSON. So now we're going to start getting into uh, JSON path syntax and how we can sort of have it do cool stuff, neat yeah. stuff. It's not just a, um, a placeholder to retrieve everything or a dollar sign dot to retrieve you know, first level fields. Um, you can grab a bunch of different stuff within your JSON object uh, when you know JSON path syntax. So. Uh, this is a great little table. Um, I highly recommend, uh, if you're taking this course, to screenshot it. And um, then you can actually find you know, ways to, uh, to, to access elements within your JSON very quickly. Um, this, isn't, <laughs> this is like the only part of the whole uh, course where this is located. So I would screenshot it. I'll move my mouse out of the way. OK. All right, you screenshot it. If not, you can pause it. Uh, <laughs> So we already use the dollar sign as the beginning of the root object. Um, at symbol, uh, that's when you're using a little bit more of like an advanced structure through JSON. I haven't actually had to use it within this course or within my day to day. So it's there though, in case we need to use it. Um, the child operator, we have been using that. So dollar sign dot pages, mm -hmm. dollar sign dot genres. That allows us to access the child of whatever precedes it. So dot is accessing the children of dollar signs. So that's um, the, the root. Yeah. So does that mean that to get into our embedded ones, like our inventory, would we have to do dollar sign dot inventory dot status? Well, that's interesting because we do have the ability to use uh, proper notation for different data types. So inventory um, is a list. Okay. So we'll be using the subscript operator. Okay. So to do inventory, uh, we'll do, oh, here he comes. And that one and <laughs> that one. Um, let's get inventory. So let's look at the inventory for the book 687. So dollar sign dot inventory. That gives us the entire list. Yep. And then let's use subscript zero. That'll give us the first element in the list. And there we go. OK. And then uh, we can just go back to our child operator of using dot. And let's get uh, the stock ID. And there we go. Is stock ID is 687 underscore one. OK. Yeah. So you can use multiple JSON paths and index characters within your 
your JSON path yeah. expression right there. Okay. Nice. Um, other ones that are really useful is wildcard. Um, kind of like you saw with Redis Insight, where it grabbed everything uh, that contains that, that number pattern that we had. Um, this also works within um, everything within an array uh, we've used or everything within a, within a child. Um, union operator. So we can uh, compound multiple arrays. Um, this one, I haven't really used a whole lot. Slice operator I have. It's okay. how you're able to actually grab a subsection of a list. Yeah, OK. Which is nice. Um, and then we have these two script expressions. Um, and those are for, uh, that's when you can actually pass in um, a script um, to do searches. Um, I think you might be able to do, uh, might be able to do regex as well. Again, okay. not very commonly used. I actually checked to make sure that we if we still do actually use these because JSON path isn't, um, it's not something that Redis has created. It is a standard yeah. uh, that, that does exist. Um, and so some we have implemented, some we just aren't going to use, some most we have. So, um, so yeah, here's some examples of uh, using JSON path extension. Again, we have json.get, um, and we're just getting the root document. So this is the one that we created previously. And again, uh, dollar sign dot pages, it just gives you the page number. Um, if we wanted to get status, kind of like what we did previously, uh, you do dollar sign dot inventory dot status. Well, I'm sorry, dot inventory sub zero. So that's gonna retrieve our first element. And then dot status is gonna give us the value right here on load. So how could I get the status, just the status of both of those? I, would I have to use an mget since I want two things? So with that one, uh oh, here we go. <laughs> okay, so for that one, um, let's use 687 again. Uh, let's see here. This one's fun because we actually didn't talk about this yet. Uh, this is a recursive search or a recursive drill down. So dollar sign dot dot status. This is going oh. to Okay, I'm right. <laughs> this is gonna <laughs> grab all status fields within your JSON object. Okay. So, so does that mean if there's like, if there was a status in our first object and a status in the nested object, it's both of those? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you have to be mindful when using this. You might get statuses that you weren't exactly thinking of. Yeah. Um, but also, if you have a JSON object where you do have consistent naming and you just want to grab all fields of this value, it's very, very helpful. Yeah. And uh, you don't have to do from the root dot dot status. You can do oh. dot inventory dot dot status. And so this is just grabbing yeah. all the status values okay. of the object with an inventory for sure. So Okay. Yeah. It's a good question. And that's a really neat one. Uh, you can do a lot of powerful stuff with that. So. Yeah. And no. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I forgot to, to talk about that one. Yeah, this is the recursive scan, the dot, dot. Yeah. It's interesting. I saw that and I like glanced over it because I was like, oh, it's going to be like the Unix command where dot dot goes backwards. And it's, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that'd be interesting. It's, it goes forwards, actually. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a little bit of a learning curve with uh, JSON path, but it's, it's pretty yeah. friendly. Um, the main thing that I recommend for those uh, watching at home and taking this course is to actually just play with a JSON object and just go through the drills of accessing all of the fields mm. within a JSON object um, as many different ways as you can. And yeah. uh, that will just help. You know, it'll, it'll, it'll teach you muscle memory. Um, so we had JSON get, we had JSON set. So now there are actually commands that we can use other than just getting and setting with uh, JSON. Otherwise, it'd be not very useful. Um, one that is useful is rlen, which stands for array length. 
And you call this upon an array within uh, your JSON object, and it will return the length of an array. So you see here, we're calling json.rlen ru204 book18161 $.inventory, and that's going to return the number of elements within that list. So um, pretty standard. Uh, now, if you want to get, this is uh, one that we were kind of like dancing around. If you want to retrieve the same field or same property uh, from multiple documents, then you get mget, where you list multiple keys, uh, as many as you want, and then you list what you want to retrieve from them. Um, and I do believe that this is variadic. Oh, no, just one property from multiple documents. So you can't get multiple properties from multiple documents, I don't believe. Okay. Let me actually check that just to make sure. Talk amongst yourselves. I just want to check this so I don't have to waste everybody's time. Yeah. Title and pages. OK, you do not. You only get one uh, property from this. So you can't okay. get it. It's good to know. Um, so here, so yeah, we're getting from two different objects, the same genre list. And so we're getting two different genre lists. Pretty simple. OK. Oh, you know what? Metflick pointed out something really good. You can easily redefine JSON's field with another value type, like int to array, which could be evil. Yes. <laughs> Uh, there's no protections, especially at the Redis CLI. So hopefully, um, when you you know write your logic uh, within your 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 individual library client, uh, you protect us, <laughs> protect us Reddit from uh, or Redis from you overwriting with weird field types. So absolutely. Okay, so uh, with this one. Um, it's just more uh, continuation. We can go over this even faster, actually. Um, JSON get RU204 book 206 is just going to give us the title. Yep. This is going to give us the first element in the inventory. Yep. And then this one will give us uh, the, the fourth. fourth element of the genres array in the book 206. And that's going to be specifically fantasy. Yeah. What happens if I try to do an index where my index is out of range? Do I just get null? Nil? I think you'll get a nil. Yeah, we, okay. we love nil. Let me check real quick. I'm going to check the tenth index of a book. Uh, it's just going to give us an empty array. Okay. Let me just check that. I just did that with mget. So let me just make sure 100%. Yeah, you just get an empty array. So okay. basically, no. OK. Um, but that's important to know for programming. Nil is a very different response than an empty array. That's true. That's true. So good to know. Um, yeah, we showed how to do a drill down of uh, accessing an embedded object within an array. So stock ID is the property of the first, uh, second object within an inventory list. And then here we go doing a recursive scan. So hey, we're looking look at that. Yeah. Dot dot stock ID. So that's gonna look for all stock ID properties within okay. the top level down of this book 206. And now we have an array slice operation. So this is gonna give us elements from two to four index. So two, uh, I think this is yeah, three and four. So this is yep. okay. exclusive. And this is inclusive, I think. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Always have to reshape that in my mind. Um, and then you see here we have inventory and then in subscript colon three. That's going to be oh. the beginning of the array all the way up to index three. But not I two. think I think your last one was a little bit off. It says we captures elements starting at two and we do not include four. Okay. So inclusive. So this in is two and three. Exclusive at the end. Yep. OK, OK, so inclusive here, first element, second element, third element. Yep. But not the fourth. OK. Who wrote this? <laughs> and then this one here, uh, inclusive of three, okay. all the no. way to the end of the array. So this one starts uh, three, four, five, six. OK. 
some further uh, you know things that we can call some further commands json.sterling which gives you the string in case you wanted that um, yeah. and um, just a gentle reminder if you are ever curious as far as what uh, commands we could call we could do clear this out json and then hang a dot and tab and then you can see all the different commands that you can run and this is uh with redis insight so our, our append sounds like we're gonna append to an array uh, array index array insert array length array pop trim there's a lot of different things so this is a really great way for you just to like take a quick look at the command and say is this something that i could use toggle yeah. Ooh, sounds fun so yeah um, my psa and another comment here, nil, null, and empty are treated differently by the client libraries. Uh, the insight is using Node Redis. We believe there could be other interpretations. And that's also an important note with the CLI in general. There are some arguments for certain commands that like I've found where for the CLI, it's an optional argument, but in Redis Pi, it's a required argument. <laughs> Not to make it uh, difficult or anything. <laughs> yeah, so that is important to note that like all of some of these little subtle intricacies of how things are returned, what's required, what's optional. Um, if you have a question, come hang out on Discord and we'll try and find you the answer. Um, I personally just go to the Redis Pi source code because it is or open source, so I can go look at the Redis Pi function I am questioning in particular and see what are the exact requirements for those arguments. Yeah, your results will vary with different client libraries, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's fun. It's it's a fun little. Yeah, yeah. You got to like, keep you on your toes. I like working with Redis CLI, because then when you implement it with everything else, you're like, that's how you do it. Interesting. OK. <laughs> OK, so we've done setting and getting. We retrieved and created. Uh, now let's update. And okay. basically, it's going to be a, a you know a lot of just um, different commands uh, that JSON has built into it. So the first one uh, we talked about this a little bit is R append. So JSON to R append <clears throat> allows you to append elements to an array. So here we see we're calling JSON to R append. We're calling our first book that we created. And then we're going to be calling a dollar dot inventory. So that means that we're going to be adding to our inventory. So we're adding the object with a new stock number and a new status value. And then when you enter that, <clears throat> you get as a response three, which oh. is new length of the array. So you get a freebie there. Now with this one, uh, array insert, uh, this one allows you to actually add at a certain index, if that's what you want to do. Array append just adds to the end. Um, this one uh, adds to exactly where you want. So here we are adding to the uh, second position within our inventory list. This one, which is stock number 181612, status available. And you notice that it returns now four because it's you know expecting us to do it within sequence. And again, this is the length of the array. Yeah. And then this one, array insert, we're going to be entering at the index three. Nothing new, just demonstration of something, you know, again. Um, and then it gives us the length of five. Um, I like doing busy work with <laughs> hands-on exercises. So if you're like, yes, I understand, OK, <laughs> that means it's working. <laughs> Um, so what's the fun of updating if you can't delete? Um, so here we go, looking at or moving out objects from uh, our, our JSON op array. Um, so we do our pop, which is going to pop the element off. So uh, just calling uh, JSON our pop and then our key name and then the list that you want to remove, uh, it's going to pop it. So you're going to have the last element of your list removed. Okay. Now we did kind of pack this command with extra functionality. So if you call our pop with um, an index option, an optional index at the end, it's going to remove it from index two. Okay. 
it's uh yeah yeah it's, it's overloaded um and all indexes all of our things are zero indexed right yeah everything is zero indexed and you can't have a redis command without having an inkerby <laughs> inkerby <laughs> um if oh you are, i checked there is no decker by there is no decker at, no, at least not for hashes yeah 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 um if you've watched a long time, you've probably seen uh, Redis Monthly Live, which is a series that Guy did and I co-hosted. And we were like, we had wax poetic about our favorite commands. And he loved Inkerby. Uh, absolutely. It was really fun. Um, so yeah, let's, let's say we have uh, a value um, that we want to set. So this is creating a new value within our existing object. And it's going to be uh, top level. Uh, it's going to be checked underscore out. And we're going to set it to zero. So that's fine. Just throwing okay. it. There's like number of times it's been checked out to the public for a library. Okay. So then we can call json.num inker by. And then uh, we put down our key. And then the, uh, the property we want to increment. And then we add a one. Then it'll update that value to one. So notice it's num anchor by, whereas some of the other uh, commands allow you to do anchor by. So it's different. I don't know what else you would anchor by <laughs> than nums, but all right. Um, and yeah, hey, I've done some cool math with like incrementing uh, like hex characters and like ASCII characters to oh, go through the alphabet. Right, right. You can, you can increment through the alphabet, which is a fun one. Uh, can you do that with Redis? Oh man, I'm sure. <laughs> I say yeah, that I'm sure. Our, our silly Redis tricks. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, this is just a continuation of calling it one more time, and it goes up to two. You can increment by any number you want, um, any positive number or any negative number, um, and that's how you actually lower. That's how them. you decker by. Yeah. Yeah. There is one decker by command, and it's just, it's just for a number. You can increment and decrement a single key. Okay. But as far as like hashes, lists, JSON, sorted sets, you just increment by a negative. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so what are we laugh here? Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, yep. We are creating a metrics object. Now, this is kind of important to see. We're actually creating an embedded object within our JSON object. So um, again, it's just a simple JSON object of two properties, and then we're encasing it or encapsulating it in uh, single quotes. So yeah, nothing magic. But then we can do is once we have these values, these numbers in here, uh, we can call numinkerby, and then we can drill down to metrics.rating votes, which is up here, and then we can increment it by a negative ten. And that will give us the new value that has been changed. So, okay. 784 to 774. That so math fun. checks out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so if we want to uh, change the value of the string, you can do set, which will change the entire thing. So here we are. It was Jennifer L. Armentrout. Now we're changing it to Jennifer Lynn Armentrout. And so this is rewriting the entire string. Um, but if we want to append to that, not just change it, but just add to the end, you see here we're doing json.stirrupend our string, $.author, and then, now this is a little clunky, but this is what we, what we have to do. In single quotes, in double quotes, <laughs> you add the, the part of the string that you want to add to the end. So we're, we're uh, we're assigning Jennifer Lynn Armitrout the uh, title of Esquire. Esquire. Oh, how does one become an Esquire? You have to uh, pass the bar. <laughs> oh, that's fair. I did not know that that's what that meant, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's like I... a fancy, uh, fancy lawyer title. Okay. So it's instead of putting like, you know, JD for like your Juris Doctorate, you can put Esquire. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. And yeah, so that's a good way if you just want to append without renaming. So that will save you size when you're actually sending over the network. Um, and yeah. if you know you just want to append, that's it. And Oh, and you get back the new length. Yeah. Redis doesn't want to, you know, de uh, 
deadhead, I think it's called, when you're like going back from one delivery to another empty, it doesn't want to come back empty Hampton. So as a courtesy, it gives you the new length of the array. Um, so we haven't talked about Booleans a whole lot, but Booleans are really easy because they're kind of strings until they're not. <laughs> Um, I feel like you just said it was really easy, and now you're like, this is going to be confusing. <laughs> it, basically, if you kind of like go into it ham-fisted, you're not going to be that bad. Um, okay. Because that's what I usually do when I start with a new technology. <laughs> um, so you see here that we have uh, json.set, our key, and then dollar sign dot has ebook version. And so we're going to create a new property, and we're just going to set it to false. Uh, no, no quotes, no single quotes, no double quotes, just false. Um, can I set it to zero as well? You can set it to zero, but then it'll be treated as a number. Interesting. Okay. So Even though works, it's responding with like that numeric version. Sorry, I skipped ahead a little bit and I read that it's going to return. <laughs> Redis yeah. responds with a numeric representation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it kind of like flips okay. between the two because it is uh, a Boolean. Yeah. Um, so you can set it to a zero, and then it will be treated as a numeric. Okay. And if your if your you know if your application will just prefer that it's a one or a zero, uh, more power to you. Um, with uh, the convenience of setting it to an actual false, then you can call JSON dot toggle, and toggle just flip the boolean, so it will be one. Um, so here we are, JSON dot toggle. And it was previously false, um, and now it is one. So okay. let me do in the background here, because I'm actually really curious if I can do. Well, actually, you know, I'll share with it. I'll share with everybody. I'm in a sharing mood. Do this. Do this. So I'm going to do. I'm going to see if I can actually. Uh, toggle a numeric value. 18161 uh, has ebook version. Um, I'll do zero. All right, JSON dot toggle. Are you 204 book 18161 peso dot has ebook version. And if I say peso instead of dollar, sorry, that's when I taught at a boot camp, I used to teach jQuery. That's how long ago that was. And I was so tired of saying dollar sign, I just said peso. It's faster. So I I want to know, can I just flip a numeric zero instead of a Boolean? Oh, no. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good to know. Uh, if okay. I, let me set it now to false. And it's like, OK, can I flip the false? Yep. OK. And then let's check uh, what value it stores our uh, Boolean value at. So has ebook version. This will give us true. So when we get toggle, this is just like a like shorthand for the actual Boolean value stored in there. Um, okay. And then just because I am very curious, I'm going to look at Insight and see what Insight stores it as. And has ebook version true. True. Cool. There we go. So fun times. The more you know. Exactly. Hey, that's why we're here. You got to learn. I mean, yeah, if you ever have any curiosities, you, well, for the most part, you can't break it. Don't ever have a curiosity in production. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there we go. And then uh, here we go, just uh, adding uh, a publisher. So this is a new yep. property. Um, and then it's really simple. When you're adding a new string or a new value, uh, add it in quotes, double quotes, because the value has to be in double quotes. And then the single quotes tells Redis to add what is between those two. Okay. Um, but so, do the double quotes is that what tells it that it's a string? 
Yeah. Like if I were to set, like when I set something to an integer, I don't have to do that. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if we were setting like an, uh, if we were setting a publisher to be uh, an actual object, we would put, um, you know, our, our curly braces right here. Yep. Right here. So. Okay. Um, let's add uh, to an existing array. So we do json.set. Uh, maybe we have a formats array. And uh, we're going to, um, here we go, we have, actually, no, this is an existing document, a new array to an existing document. Yeah. Um, so now we're just listing all the different uh, available formats for this book. And again, it will just send, okay, I have this. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. And then this is kind of a fun, tricky one. <laughs> Simon oh, and I man. have fun creating this because it's kind of hard to look at. Um, <laughs> we created, we're going back into that metrics object, which has rating votes and uh, rating. And we're adding another object of popularity. So this is a breakdown of people that voted for this book by age. So in the less than 18 crowd, 20 people voted for it. For the 18 to 25 crowd, 32 people voted for it. So this is immaterial, but this is the actual uh, object, the embedded object that we want to place within our, uh, our main JSON document. So we're going to drill yeah. down into metrics and we're going to call it popularity. So how would I, how would I have to access? I mean, those are strings, right? Yeah. So I would just put it as a string. Okay. Yeah. So this one would be fun. So we would, we would do, <laughs> uh, if we wanted to get to the 18 to 25 crowd, do dollar sign dot metrics dot popularity dot 18 dash 25. Okay. Yeah. Oof. That'll be just, that'll play a lot of havoc in a lot of <laughs> a lot of different clients, but oh well. Um, so yeah, we have JSON that are append. So we're taking our inventory and then we're adding just another object. We've kind of done this ad nauseum already. Yep. And then and we get one, back the new length of the array. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Same and with then, insert. Right. The insert we are adding at index four. And uh, it'll give us with the uh, it'll give us back the entire length of the array. And again, for array pop, without this uh, optional argument of three, it will just remove the absolute last element within that array. Okay. If you do give it the optional argument of the index. It will remove uh, the element at that index. So. Okay. Do we have a like? Oh well, I guess um, I guess zero is the first. I was gonna say yeah. if there's a way to mimic like L pop as opposed to R pop, but I guess then you you can just put the zero index there and that'll always be an yeah. L pop. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, yeah, it's not as uh, robust, I guess you could say, as uh, our list commands like L pop, R pop, R push. Burl popple push. Burl popple push. I think that the. You know they got rid of it. It's no longer burr popple push or er popple push. It's le move um, <laughs> or remove r move or l move boo i know it's not as fun but <laughs> oh well um so yeah again for those gonna... listening i for those listening there used yeah. to be a really fun list command that was like br pop l push and it yeah. was an r pop followed by an l push and it would be blocking so it, it was kind of a fun command because it would just do a lot and just one yeah else would... But I guess uh, they've given it a shorter name. I know, boo. <laughs> uh, here we are just uh, updating existing properties. So we're changing uh, publisher from Simon and Schuster to Ram and ha uh, Random House. Um, and the if you want to append um, a string to a string, you do stir append. So JSON dot stir append. And then updating an existing array element in a document, you just do status. You drill down to the element, and if you want to do a specific property within the element, you call that status, and then in a double quote, single quote, encapsulation. Oof. Yeah. So what would happen if I tried to do something like an array append to something that's not an array? Is it probably just going to be nil still? I think it would freak out. Let me check oh, out real okay. quick here. Well, because you were saying that you were going to change the publisher, and I was like, oh, well, like, what if... What if they published different versions? I know there's a lot of classics that are published by a bunch of different people. Right. 
So what if all of a sudden there just was two publishers? You would have to convert it, which I would probably do with the set. But... Okay. I am testing it locally. Okay. You get a null. Okay. So let me try that specifically with title. Yeah, you get a null. So it, okay. you cannot call our append on a string, an existing string. So so does so set just kind of like it's always going to like it basically erases whatever was there before. So if I wanted to change publisher from a string to a list, I can just do set dollar sign dot publisher give it a list and now it's a list okay yeah i mean it's it's quite destructive and you probably wouldn't do that programmatically but yeah you could definitely do that yeah okay um yeah Ooh, mephilic found a fun redis trick uh json set can work with numbers bool array of numbers bools without any quotes hmm. uh, and you can just do like this like it looks like we have just uh five six seven in in square brackets it's fine so quotes are only for objects and strings Yep. Okay. Yeah. Good observation. I um, I always do everything. Uh, I guess I'm gonna say academically. Like I still capitalize my commands and oh. I have everything in caps <laughs> just because I like to be academic. But yeah. Oh, okay. You, you can do things a little fast, uh, a little fast and dirty there. Um. Yeah. Here's I another. like to try to be the laziest programmer I can be. <laughs> All lowercase. <laughs> All lowercase. Oh, I if have... I use a capital variable, you should think something is wrong. <laughs> it's a it's a cry for help. <laughs> um, yeah. Ever since uh, ever since uh, working for Redis, I've uh, kind of taught myself how to type at speed with a okay. shift button pressed down or held down um, with my pinky. It's yeah. Kind of fun. Uh, yeah. So all these JSON dot set commands and everything for those of you watching, whenever you watch. You don't actually have to capitalize them. Yeah, that's yeah, totally up to you. You can, you don't have to capitalize them. I capitalize them because I'm just a nerd. So well, and the capitalization, I will say, like in format like this, it makes it really clear that this is the command part and right. this is the rest of it. So you know, for stuff like this, I think it's really helpful to have it capitalized. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm just lazy, so I'm not going to capitalize it when I'm actually typing it on my CLI. <laughs> um. Yeah, so here we are using num by. Uh, we're updating the rating votes to increment it by 23, and that will give us a new value. So it looks like 30, uh, 3,436 is the new value. Uh, 23 was added. And interesting. This is the exact same command. Oh, you know what I think we're supposed to do? Let's reduce the rating votes by 10. Oh, this is a mistake. This should be a negative number right here. Ooh. Ooh, who wrote this? <laughs> it was Simon, not me. One second. <laughs> Decker 23. Okay. So, yeah, if you have a negative 23, uh, well, no, negative 10, because the numerical difference is 10. Oh. It does say let's reduce the rating votes by 10. Yeah, so this is just copy pasta right here. So this right here should be negative uh, 10. I'm surprised nobody has told us about this. Shame on the audience, not on me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's how you subtract numbers from the values. Yep. And then you can use json.del. And this is okay. if you want to remove something from JSON, like the entirety. So if you want to remove an entire um, Embedded object, you want to remove an entire list. You can drill down and remove an element within a list. So this is negative one. That means that it's removing the last object within yep. the list. Or if you want to reduce the entire thing, you have to go on to remove the entire thing. OK. Uh, and then this is just adding it back because we want to continue using it. <laughs> and. That's the end of section one. Okay. Yeah. So that actually uh, wasn't that bad. Um, no, that was fun. Yeah. I learned things. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So the sections aren't very long. This course isn't very long because it really depends on like your comfort and your experience with JSON. 
Yeah. And also your curiosity. I mean, you know, we definitely deviated from the course a little bit just because I was like, I wonder. Yeah. And so, you know, you as a person who's taking Redis University courses is also probably a curious person. So, you know, you get to take your time and explore and ask questions and see what you can do. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. And it's, um, it's really nice not having to serialize anymore or create multiple data uh, objects or, or data types within Redis to compensate. Yeah. For fun, you can just throw it in and access everything. Um, and then uh, the next couple of days, uh, we'll learn how to actually um, integrate this with indexing and search. And then you can do some really, really cool stuff. Uh, okay. Like aggregations, finding like all books written by Stephen King that are good, not bad. Okay. They're written between 85 and 95. And yeah. So my goal is by the end of this to know how to find the longest book in the list. Okay. Yeah, definitely. We could definitely okay. do that. So the, the longest book of the most pages. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. We'll do that. Okay. Um, Cause that's, that's the only one I want to read. I just want to be able to say, oh yeah, I read, I read the longest one in the list. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We can find the longest <laughs> that's book. That's not true. That's not a goal. <laughs> I'm not, don't hold me to that one. We'll start the Redis search, uh, uh, Redis JSON and search book club. <laughs> well, cool. Um, yeah, if anybody has any questions or comments uh, after watching this video, uh, ask us on Discord. Yeah. We're more than happy to answer questions. Um, and we'll be back here tomorrow, same time, same place. So we might, if someone pops in with a really cool question, we might talk about it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then this, uh, if you want to see this video in the future or other videos, or if you want to learn more about Redis JSON, we do have uh, explainer videos on our YouTube channel. So definitely go there. We cover, uh, we also have RU101 Live where I hang out with Suze and we go over um, RU101, which is uh, Redis data structures. And that's a good introduction to our course if you haven't taken this yet. Yeah, absolutely. And again, all of our courses are at university.redis.com. And Tell me yeah. more about this whole six weeks thing. Because someone mentioned it. And when I go to sign up for Redis University, what am I what am I signing up for? What am I what am I telling you I'm gonna do in six weeks? Right. So basically you go there and you have the option to enroll in any of our courses. And we don't wanna kinda like we don't wanna overload you. We expect everybody here is already either um a bootcamp student or a computer science student or a database aficionado or a developer or you know somebody within technology so we're not going to try to like make you do this all in one day um okay six weeks is the absolute maximum so we expect you to do a section a week so okay. we did it in an hour and a little bit of, yeah okay so um we also are very comfortable with Redis already. And That's true. Paper, so. Sure. Um, okay. So yeah, five sections. Uh, we just did the, the first section. Um, tomorrow, we're going to play with some client libraries with Redis. And then okay. after that, we're going to play with some search. And then uh, the next day. And then the fourth day, we're going to play with search with client libraries. And on the fifth okay. day, we'll have some advanced topics. And that's where we start getting really uh really out there with our search and that's 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 actually a lot of fun okay so those represent the five weeks and then the sixth week is uh dedicated to taking the well there is no exam i don't think we have an exam no we do 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 i'm sorry we do have an exam uh for this course um and that last week just allows you to prepare uh to take the exam okay cool yeah. And it doesn't have to be within those six weeks. You can do it all within one day. You can do it all within one week, um, yeah. whatever is best for you. So. Okay. Cool. So yeah, tune in tomorrow, uh, same time, uh, 12 o'clock Pacific. Um, 12, and... 12, 11.30? I'm sorry. Two... Yeah, 11.30. <laughs> 2.30 Eastern time. Yeah, 2.30 Eastern, 11.30. 30, Which I uh, think, I think it's 6.30 UTC. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think two is six. I think 2.30 should be 6.30. <laughs> I 
hold on. Let me see if I can find. Oh, uh, seven. I think it might be seven. Oh man. Seven thirty UTC. Oh. Or at least one. That's Close. fair. Close. All right. Well, yeah. Again, if you have any questions, join us on Discord. Otherwise, I'll see everybody tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.